you've been on the edge of your seat for ages, just dying for that sweet console exclusive to make its grand entrance on the PC platform. The day is here, you can't resist, so you fork over 60 bucks for that non-refundable masterpiece, but surprise, it's a hot, unoptimized mess. Bugs galore, crashes left and right, just barely clinging to playability. So do you power through this digital dumpster fire? Or do you hit pause for a month? Let's dive in and find out. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ here with Elevated Systems, and we've seen title after title come to PC that were not ready for PC, and now, on top of just being buggy and unoptimized, we've seen the latest titles like Resident Evil 4, The Last of Us Part 1, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor seemingly being built for only top-end hardware, leaving players with entry-level or even mid-tier hardware behind. So today, I'll be looking at The Last of Us a month and three patches later to see how much if any improvements have been made. I'll be testing a total of 10 graphics cards from Nvidia, AMD, and Intel, ranging in price from about $150 to just about $400. And instead of hitting you with a barrage of graphs and charts, I'll be sharing my gameplay footage and stats as we explore the game's settings together and find the perfect balance between visuals and performance. Let's quickly go over the test bench and parameters. Each graphics card will be paired with a Ryzen 5 5600X, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL16 memory on an ASUS Prime X570 motherboard. I'm testing on the latest Windows 11 22H2 update. For Nvidia, we're using driver 531.68, AMD Adrenaline 23.4.2. There was the notorious delay while textures were being built, but the 33 minutes it took my test system to do it on the 1.0.4.1 patch was 11 minutes faster than it took on day one. All right, time for some real world no nonsense testing. Without a flood of boring charts and graphs, I simply played through the game, swapping graphics cards as I went. Kicking off with Nvidia, I went from the bottom to the top, then wiped those drivers clean with DDU, brought in AMD cards, testing top to bottom, and finished up testing with my lone Intel card. Our mission, to keep things buttery smooth at around 60 FPS while tweaking settings for the most immersive visuals. The name of the game here is eliminating those pesky distractions that yank you out of the experience. Take the humble GTX 1650 with its four gigabyte VRAM limit, for instance. We fired up 1080p FSR2 balance scaling and low graphics presets and boom, solid frame rates even with VRAM overextended but I did encounter some distracting visuals that pulled my focus from the story. Now, here's a tip for improving graphics on entry-level graphics cards. Don't just crank up geometry and texture quality settings, it's a trap. You get minimal visual gains, but a nosedive in performance. This GTX 1650 just doesn't have the muscle or the VRAM for that. So instead, I opted for better anti-aliasing or texture filtering to smooth out those jagged edges and flickering objects and flipped on a few shadow and lighting options. Lo and behold, even with the lowest quality textures, our game now looks way more immersive thanks to realistic lighting and shadows. Trust me, your brain will spot wonky light and sad shadows long before it cares about flat walls or low-res skin textures. Focus on those immersive details to keep you locked into a gripping story. With my settings tweaked, I was able to enjoy the experience as I ran through the burning city trying to escape the infected. To keep our eyes dry, we skip ahead a bit with the still popular GTX 1060 installed. With its two additional gigs of GDDR5 texture space, starting with the same settings carried over from the 1650, I was able to bump up the texture quality up to medium and still maintain an average frame rate of about 65 FPS with 1% lows averaging around 50. And again, not only was the game smooth and free of crashes or bugs, it was very immersive considering the five-year-old graphics card I'm using. Here is a really good example of how realistic shadows bring you into the game. As we progress to the outside into a much larger environment, the frame rates do dip, Still perfectly fine for this style of game, but the key thing to notice as I speed through this part is the super flat frame time graph. There are no big spikes or dips. I didn't experience any stutters or lags on the GTX 1060. Moving on to the slightly newer GTX 1660, I was able to jump up to the medium preset and again, ensure all my lighting and shadow options were enabled. 
and maintain the 67 and 50 FPS average and 1% lows respectively. However, here I did notice small variations in frame times as I moved from scene to scene, but these frame time flutters were minimal and short lived and were only barely noticeable in actual gameplay. Next up is the RTX 3050, and although it doesn't have much more GPU power than the 1660, with its 8GB of VRAM, I was able to increase to high texture qualities and even pump up the shadows and lighting quality. I also switched from FSR2 to DLSS balanced, and as I run through the game, you can see that with average frame rates in the upper 70s, I actually had some room to increase some of my environmental textures had I wanted to. The final NVIDIA card is the RTX 3060 Ti, which just a few months ago could play pretty much any new AAA title at 1080p Ultra with no problems. However, here we see for the first time today where the ultra level textures with only eight gigs of VRAM start to bog down the system. As you can see significant fluctuations in frame times and FPF swinging from the upper 80s down to the 30s. It's only due to the 3060 Ti's 448 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth that there weren't significant stutters in the game. However, I did still choose to back off some of the settings for a more consistent frame rate, and this is where I ran into the first bug. After changing the settings, my frame rates dropped into the single digits, most likely as a result of an incomplete cache purge, you can see that our RAM usage is significantly higher than it has been this whole time. Future CJ here with some new info. Between testing, filming, and now editing the video, NVIDIA released a driver update that addresses The Last of Us crashes on 30 series cards after changing certain settings. So that problem I just demonstrated may have been fixed on that driver update. If any of you have seen improvements with driver 531.79, let us know in the comments. After a quick system reboot, everything worked fine and I experienced nice stable frame rates averaging around 70 FPS with 1% lows in the upper 40s. That was it for Nvidia, so moving on to AMD, I started with the highest end card I'll be testing today, the RX 6750 XT with its 12 gigs of VRAM. I immediately jumped into the game at 1080p Ultra preset and was super impressed with the sub $400 card's ability to deliver smooth frame rates of over 90 FPS. After several minutes of no issues, I decided to jump up to 1440p, and with several selective settings, I was able to maintain high frame rates with a mix of high and ultra settings for the best looking visuals we'll see in this testing today. Just take a look at this cutscene and pay attention to the hair because we're gonna talk about that more in a bit. From the 6750 XT, we're moving to the RX 5700, and again, stepping back down to 1080p, I went with the high preset here, and again, we had very smooth frame rates in the 70 FPS range. There were very slight dips when the draw distances in this area of the game increased, but this is typical performance of any graphics card. The next card is the RX 6600, and starting at the same settings I had for the RX 5700, I immediately noticed I was getting much better performance with this card, so I was able to jump up to some ultra settings and increase the lighting and shadow resolutions, and despite taking the VRAM to its limit, I still had great visuals and high frame rates. However, this is another example of the VRAM limiting the GPU. This RX 6600 had more GPU power to give to higher graphics settings, but not enough VRAM to handle those textures. For our final AMD card, I'm stepping all the way back to 2017 with the 4 gigabyte RX 580. I dialed in the same low settings with the slightly increased shadows and lightings as I had for the GTX 1650, and while the average FPS didn't quite hit 60, at 54 and 1% lows of 43, this was by the numbers the smoothest gameplay of any card I tested.
All right, guys, before we jump into the final GPU, let's address a glaring discrepancy I discovered between NVIDIA and AMD cards, and it's all about the hair. Check out this cutscene on the RTX 3050 at 1080p high, with character detail and textures cranked up to ultra, the hair, not so great. Now take a look at this scene on the RX 580 at 1080p low, and while it's not perfect, it's a significant step up from the RTX 3050. Now Nvidia has historically struggled with hair in non-typical game engines that don't use some flavor of Nvidia Hairworks, but this example is especially rough. Anyway, I just mentioned it because it's one of the things that still distracted me, but it's definitely a huge improvement over where we were just a month ago. Finally, let's look at the game's performance on the Intel Arc A750, which should perform somewhere between the RTX 3050 and RX 6600. I started at the 1080p high, just like I did for the RX 5700, and despite being within the VRAM limits, I saw the biggest frame rate swings of any GPU. Now, there weren't huge stutters or lags, but the deviation between the average and 1% frame rates was the highest of all the cards, and there was some micro stuttering. With some time and dedication, I could probably find a happy medium in the settings for smoother gameplay, but my impression is there has definitely been less optimization for Intel graphics than there has been for Nvidia and AMD, but this is probably to be expected until Intel hopefully carves out a larger market share. All right, guys, so that wraps up my testing. Now, I could go down a rabbit hole and discuss topics like whether we should expect games, particularly console ports, to launch perfectly optimized for every possible PC hardware combo on day one, or if it's realistic to want a game designed for a system with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 to run flawlessly on our four, six, or eight gigabyte graphics cards, and then there's the whole console game should stay on console arguments, but I'll leave those debates to you guys in the comments. What I will say is that while I anticipate some bugs and optimization issues when a new game launches, it feels like things have gotten worse over the past few years. Game devs used to be on top of beta testing their titles to iron out issues pre-launch. Nowadays, it seems like general releases are treated as beta tests. So while Naughty Dog did catch some flack for the initial state of this game, and rightly so, they also deserve credit for addressing most of the launch issues in just a month's time. All right. Summary time. I put 10 older GPUs ranging from ultra budget to mid tier through their paces across a significant chunk of the game. To my surprise, I encountered zero crashes and aside from the Intel Arc or when I pushed the VRAM buffer to its limit, gameplay was buttery smooth. No lag, no stuttering, and no major visual hiccups and zero crashes. Overall, a pretty solid experience given the hardware in play. Now, on my own personal mid-tier gaming setup, we're talking a Ryzen 7600X, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600, and the RX 6750 XT, I've been enjoying the game at 1440p with high and ultra settings. I'm over halfway through and it's been smooth sailing, no issues whatsoever. So there you have it, folks. Looks like the game's in a good place for wide range of hardware. Final verdict, guys, if you're rocking a budget or mid-range gaming rig and you've been itching to dive into The Last of Us but got cold feet due to the initial feedback, I'd say it's a good time to give it a shot. Just keep in mind, like the devs, I'm working with a limited pool of hardware for testing, so your mileage may vary. If you've already taken the plunge since the 1.0.4 update, don't be shy. Drop your system specs and your experience in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our future content. Catch you in the next one.